it's cold. We have made it. We left Jordan to go visit some friends back in Anacortes, and now we are dropping the hook in Bellingham. saved all of these stainless steel bolts because someday I was going to need exactly two. All right, here are the lucky winners that are gonna go into the companion way. So today I'm doing a tiny little project. I just have to install this. I don't know what happened to the old one, but it's gone. So, oh yes, Searle did some work on the doors and he took the old I don't know what this part's called of the lock, but he took that off, so now it's gone. So we're gonna go outside and replace it. So let's go. That guy's gonna go right about there. Perfect. It's Fort Knox in here now. Well, we're in Anacortes right now. I am gonna shoot in and I've got my little day pack ready. It was a birthday present for last year from Aubrey. It is my favorite dry bag. It's called a Vizula 30. It's got nice straps and everything, so it's quite easy. And why are we going in? First of all, Poodle needs to poop. Got some trash, but uh, heading off to Emerald Marine, they've completed the blocks which are going to be the standoffs for those stern chain plates. Um, they didn't finish it entirely. I'm going to do the finishing, save on some labor costs. So I'm going to take you with me. Okay, poodle. Come. Hop. Good boy. Sometimes I wish Poodle had some posable thumbs so he could tie off for us. Okay, Poodle, hop! Somebody's got the hops. Okay. It is always easy to find Emerald Marine because they always have some interesting wooden boat out front. And today they don't disappoint. Man, check out those bronze cleats in there. Everything's always beautiful. Here they are. My templates still remaining. So these are the new Purple Heart standoffs. With them looking fantastic with an 80 grit finish even. <laughs> Well, that was pretty painless. Uh, special thanks to the guys at Emerald Marine for doing that. Uh, I have some experience working with that Purple Heart, trying to make the autopilot controls fit on the helm station. And it is a real pain working with Purple Heart. And 
I can see why you put so many hours in already. Anyway, back to the boat. Easy starter. Poodle, come. Good boy. Poodle, you ready? You ready? Definitely some rain and some wind coming up here. A little bit roly poly. So I am on the last chain plate right now. I uh, it's kind of been an experiment working my way around the boat. So right now I'm on the worst one of the chain plates. This one has caused the most significant damage to the cap rail. And the reason why this is happening is these are new chain plates. They're not the same size as the original ones. They differ ever so slightly. But underneath the cap rail, you've got the standoff block. And the standoff block was original to the last setup. And it just, it's just not working. This standoff block has to protrude further, keep the chain plate off the cap rail. So what's happened now, the cap rail's pushed, 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 pushed. And you can see over here the damage that has been caused. So the cap rail's kind of lifted itself and it's slid over. So this is utterly awful. So what I have done is I've removed rigging from each of the chain plates working my way around and uh, made a recess around the back of the cap rail. So just around the back here to alleviate the pressure of the chain plate being tensioned in onto the cap rail. So I've cut a recess, you can get your finger behind there. And that's why all the tension is on this standoff block. Speaking to some carpenters, they believe that this will come out no problem. Uh, just a bit of time. Just don't want like this piece to fall off. It's made uh, Aubrey quite sad, so I'm trying my best. So looking at the starboard, you can starboard stone chain plates. You can see the recess has been cut out enough that even with the chain plate flexing in, it is not compressing against the cap rail. The cap rail has come down ever so slightly and has now caused this massive crack, which is not great. The aft ones aren't an issue because most of the force is directly up and the spreaders you can see the spreaders are quite wide out so the force the primary force is directly up so there's not an issue on the stern here you can see the port side man it's compressed in even though i cut that far more than the other ones you can see that it's pulled in quite significantly yeah man it's so sad to see the damage that is been caused to this cap rail and the process in which to fix it it is a great disappointed disappointment to Aubrey and myself those stone chain plates being the issue that they are and the damage that they've caused but it's not something we can address at this point and I think once we get south we'll tackle it in such a way that that could never ever be an issue and it can be as beefed up as possible. Another small but tedious electrical project is at the upper helm station. I would like to hook up the compass light to a switch uh, probably up in this corner and then I'd also like to hook this button up to the boat horn and with the flick of the switch we have good old-fashioned navigation it did take a bulb change and a little bit of soldering, but I managed to get that working perfectly. So we have this switch here that's off, that's on for the compass light. So when you're running it during the daytime, I don't have to worry about that bulb burning out at all. Uh, it is an incandescent bulb. Eventually, I would love to change it out with an LED bulb, less worry less maintenance.
While completing this project, I also took the time to add extra supports along the ridge here and mounting this down securely in the corners. Now this uh, whole display is a whole lot more rigid and feels a lot better. I was also able to complete the horn. So now this upper helm station I feel is in good enough condition and has enough information up here to make the next journey as safe as possible. So now we have both an interior and exterior horn button. So these clutches are going to be installed over here so the furling lines can come down into those clutches plus the stay sail sheet will be there and then we will have a winch mounted over here it just needs to be brought up high enough so we got six holes time to get the drill and cutting fluid out so I've got a towel down underneath I have a center punch and some cutting fluid and then I'm just gonna drill slowly this is about eighth inch thick uh, stainless and I got these Milwaukee uh, cobalt ones that kind of work pretty well with the stainless so you get the idea and then I'm gonna slowly step up the size just do it slow apply a little bit of pressure and shouldn't take too long holes drilled and just a slight over the top I think they're all gonna line up real nicely okay furling lines come down into its clutch and then it would eventually have its own winch available but for now it looks pretty good what we're gonna need to do is put one or maybe two uh, low friction pad eyes on the inside of this bulwark to get these lines as far off to the side as possible. When we put up the head sails, both the Genoa and the stay sail, we messed around with furling it and we ran into issues on both the Genoa and the stay sail in terms of furling. With the main Genoa, the issue was we had too many wraps of this on the thicker side of line uh, that would cause a bind within the drum like there was just wasn't enough space within the drum which caused the line to overlap on itself and then you wouldn't be able to uh, the line would fill outside of the drum and the whole drum would rotate it was a huge disaster but we removed a few wraps from that and it's working fine now uh, but the stay sail also had its own problems and the stay sail problems had to do with its feed line so our plan of attack was to add a fair lead that is adjustable and we can figure out where the exact angle for the best uh, fill possible on the stay sail we really need these things to work, be bulletproof and move freely can't have them binding up because coming out here on the bowsprit with the tendency for this boat to have a hobby horsing action in uh, rougher conditions this is not a place you want to come mess around with tools trying to fix things and get sails down so this is our solution the stay sail fair lead that we used prior was this one and that would run directly to the drum that wasn't good enough it was too high of an angle and would cause the spool to fill up at the top and then it wouldn't want to get any more on or it would l fall down on itself and cause a knot inside the actual drum so what we've done is added one of these synthetic fair leads and on a piece of Dyneema that took me about 30 minutes to splice because I didn't have the right size uh, 
fid and it's also always harder with smaller line but now we have the perfect angle and I'm going to fill, uh, pull out the sail and you're going to see how nice it winds around the drum. You can see that is a very clean fill. There's not going to have any obstructions. I didn't even have to worry about adding tension to this. I'm uh, also going to upgrade this block and this synthetic um, shackle. I've got larger block and larger synthetic shackle. This will be much better suited. The stay sail after all is going to get the most bullying out of all the sails and probably the most use in the worst conditions. Just remove the sheet line and use the tail of the main halyard on this winch to secure it in place and here is a close-up on the different sizes so this is definitely going to be much better suited for this application definitely looking better suited for the task so another little quick job is a high bilge alarm we have one of these a little bit old school traditional school belt looking one it's a aqua alarm unit and we're going to install it on the outside of the station over here just in this gap. I managed to mount the high bilge alarm in a non-invasive location here on the port side of the interior helm station and eventually we'll have all our alarms be running towards this one where we can have just one central silencing point. So down here in the bilge we have our diaphragm pickup on the right hand side which is this skinnier white pipe and then the larger white pipe is the centrifugal pump which is our high bilge pump and mounted on the top of it is the bilge switch and that is what the high bilge alarm is wired to. Worst case scenario, you hear that alarm, now it's going off, going off, going off, now we're taking on water, and you need to like think, and you can't think when you have that sort of noise going on. You cannot think! So I also took the time to install a silencing switch where you can turn off the alarm. That was pretty easy to do. I feel very good about that install and it is so bonkers loud the boats nearby will be able to hear that. Uh, one of the last projects I can get done with the time is uh, the lower end service of the outboard. We also have a new prop to put on it. I'm gonna zip into land, go do that stuff and I'm gonna take you with me. So if you recognize this beach it's actually where Houdini used to live, right there. Um, the place I wanted to go do this work for the dinghy, they're actually having a concert right now and I don't think it would be very nice for me to be in the background changing oils and stuff like that. Also, I don't want to get in any trouble. So, I'm going to have to remove my shoes, work in the water here, get the lower end off, do all what's necessary. Not looking forward to it, water's still cold. When removing the bottom end, it's basically this whole section is going to come off. Here you can see the split line. Uh, you disconnect the gear linkage, which I've already done. And then I've removed the three bolts on this side. Just have to remove the bolts on the other side, then this whole piece should slide out, no problem. It's cold, really, really cold. Lower end unit is off. You're not going anywhere. Okay, got the lower end sitting over here now. I've got to remove the impeller housing, take that off and I have new impeller housing, or oh, not impeller housing, it's the impeller with the plates and gasket and I've got some tools to take it all apart. That's what the impeller looks like. It honestly does not look bad at all. Uh, once I take it off I'll give it a closer inspection, but I think somebody's actually been in here more recently. Um, but it's good to know moving forward 
when the last one was done. So the new kit comes with the impeller, a new key, the bottom gasket, and then your plate. What I've done was take some 320 sandpaper, just clean up the surface. Uh, now we're just gonna place the cloth gasket down first. So a gasket on, slide down, seat that. Then we take the steel plate, pump plate, put that down. Okay, looking fresh. Next step is, got to get the key in, like that, and then we need to take the impeller, you can see that it has a groove in it, the top here, so that needs to come down that direction, so feed that down. Oh, wish I brought some assembly lube for this. Or anything really. This is gonna take two hands. With a lot of fiddling, I managed to get it on. So now, that's all good. Now when we put the, the pump housing back on, we need to rotate the shaft in the direction that it does, so the blades of the impeller fold the right direction. Housing went down, goes in the right direction. Now I just need to fasten these lock washers with 10 millimeter nuts, and then I'll move on to draining the oil and filling it up. So that's the drained oil. It only takes about 230 milliliters, uh, almost eight ounces, but that is black. It clearly is missed a few changes because the normal color of it is like a golden oil color. So now I'm just snip the, the lid. This is what it uses. And I'm gonna fill it up over there. Oil done, impeller done. Now it's changed the prop. You can see this prop's taken quite a knock. There we have it. New prop on, locking pin in. Now to reassemble the engine, take it for a rip. Another quick easy job. I must say like over the years as I'm gaining more and more experience, like this would have been daunting to me the first year I was out here. But man, just uh, YouTube Academy and uh, especially with older things have some sort of manual and read through it the night before or two nights before just brainstorm and then the day comes where it's perfect weather or you've got the right location to do the job and then bang you smash a job out in it was 40 minutes on the beach right now and it was beautiful weather i wish i had a beer with me to celebrate but just get back to the boat i don't truly feel that there's much of a speed difference but you can definitely feel there's less cavitation um, with that short shaft it's pretty close to the surface when you start really flying. Water pumps running nicely, gearbox engagement is all great. So yeah, it's ready to run the next 100 hours before we have to do another oil change. But uh, I think that impeller freed up some other gunk that was stuck in the system. So I think it was used for duck hunting and that could have had a lot of silt picked up in the, the mud that's probably clogged off some orifices inside the engine but that's all freed up and it's got a good telltale now um, otherwise temperature dropped immensely right now it's time for whiskey